talk about uh, something known as bagging for decision trees. So last time we talked about how there are certain pros for decision trees. For example, decision trees are really simple. They're easy to interpret. You basically are just following a sequence of logical steps. You don't really need to understand statistics or kind of the underlying um, you know, things that went into the model in order to understand the output. But the cons are that they tend to not be really competitive in terms of predictive accuracy. And so as I mentioned last time, we're going to discuss ways to combine multiple trees, and this is going to improve that accuracy. And so these are known as ensemble methods. So basically what we're doing is instead of just fitting a single tree uh, that has you know, the chance of being very overfit to a, uh, to a specific training data set, we could, could, we could fit multiple trees and sort of do something to combine that output in order to improve our predictive accuracy. So that's where bagging comes in. So the, the term bagging, basically this is a general purpose procedure for reducing the variance of statistical learning methods. And so bagging can be done outside of just trees. But it's particularly useful and frequently used in the context of decision trees. And so this another word for this is bootstrap aggregation. Uh, so the methods that we're going to be talking about today are directly related to bootstrapping. And they're similar to kind of what we've been thinking about when we use cross-validation as well. So mathematically, why does this work? Well, let's go back to some methods that we talked about probably in your introduction to statistics class, uh, where if you have a set of n observations, so for example, z1 to zn, and each have a variance of sigma squared, what would the variance of the mean be? So z bar. So think back to when you, very back when you first were learning about uh, random variables, if you have a bunch of independent observations, they all have a variance of sigma squared. How could you calculate the variance of the, of the mean? So the variance of the mean is sigma squared over n. And so sigma squared over n is inherently going to be smaller than sigma squared if you have more than just one observation, right? Because you're dividing by something positive, n is going to be your number of observations. And so uh, this is, means that your variance uh, of an average is going to be smaller than the individual variances. So averaging a set of observations is going to reduce that variance. And so in general, this uh, kind of information is not practical because we usually don't have multiple training sets. But that's where bagging comes in, where basically we're going to try to create an environment where instead of just using one tree and getting kind of the average predictions from that, we could average the results over multiple trees. And since we often don't have multiple training sets, uh, we're going to kind of artificially create multiple training sets from our single data set. So we know that averaging a set of observations reduces the variance. We also know that this is not generally practical because we don't usually have multiple training sets. And so what do you think we could do to solve this problem, kind of using some of the tools that we've already learned? We can bootstrap or we could take a repeated sample from a single training data set. So kind of like in cross-validation where you split the data into uh, you know, certain folds and you fit the, the uh, model on one fold, you test it on a different fold. Bootstrapping is basically just taking repeated samples from your data set and seeing how a model will run on each of them. And so this is the bagging process. You generate B different bootstrapped training sets, and so that basically means you take your big data set and then you randomly sample B times from that data set. And then you train your method, so we fit our decision tree on the B bootstrap training set, and we get an estimated prediction for that training set at a single at a given point X. So we're going to train. We're going to first split our data into a bunch of uh, resampled training sets. And then on each of those resampled sets, we're going to fit our model, so fit our decision tree and get some predictions. And then we're going to average all those predictions. And so this is just taking the mean. We, take, we sum up all those predictions and we divide by 1 over b since we have b different predictions since we have a different prediction over each of our training sets. This is bagging. So bagging for regression trees, we basically are going to generate those B different bootstrap training sets. 
We're going to fit the regression tree on the beef bootstrap to uh, bootstrap training set to get that predicted uh, point, and then we're going to average over all of those predictions. For classification trees, it's slightly different, and so for each test observation, you're going to record the class that was predicted by each of the B trees, and then you're going to take the majority vote. And so what that means is basically the overall prediction is going to be the most commonly occurring class across the B predictions. So let's say that uh, I classified uh, into, we have two groups, group A and B, and I look for a given X value, I run it through my model, and I see that uh, eight of my um, trees predict in group A, and seven of my trees predict in group B, I would say that this particular observation is going to get grouped into group A because eight is greater than seven. So you're going to always give it the one that's most commonly occurring. So when you do bagging, you can then calculate something called the out-of-bag error. And so this is going to be the test error of the bagged model. And so the key to bagging is that the trees are repeatedly fit to bootstrapped subsets of the observations. And so on average, each bagged tree makes use of about two-thirds of the observations. You can prove this, um, but it's not required for this course. And so the remaining one-third of the observations not being used to fit a given bag tree are called the out-of-bag observations. And so what you can do is you can predict the response for the i observation using each of the trees that the observation was uh, out of bag. And so if you do this, how many predictions do you think this will yield for the i observation? It's going to be b over 3. So basically, if you, if you know that uh, two, each one is contributing to 2 thirds, and you know that uh, 1 third is going to be out of bag, and so you can divide b, which is your total number of, of uh, training sets, uh, by 3 to figure out how many predictions you're going to get for the i observation. And then we can average this, and so we'll take those b over 3 predictions. So let's say b is 9. If we fit uh, this on nine different training sets, we'd have three different predictions for each of that, uh, each observation, and you would take the average of these uh, of these predictions. And so this estimate actually is essentially going to be the leave one out cross validation error for bagging as long as b is large. So if you set b to be something big enough, then this is going to basically approximate our leave one out cross validation error, um, which we know is a good a, a good estimate of a test error. Okay, so what I want you to do is spend five minutes drawing a diagram to basically describe the bagging process to someone who's never heard of this before. So just take some paper and draw out a diagram to kind of be able to describe what's happening in the bagging process, uh, and, um, uh, and then we'll talk about this together.
So let's see if I can draw a picture that sort of tries to get at what, what a bagging is doing.